The first edition of the workshop was technically sponsored by the IEEE UP section and IEEE Signal Processing Society UP section. More than 50 researchers attended the workshop and benefited from it. The resource person in the first edition were from across the globe. It means the, the resource person were, were, were from India, University of Calgary, Canada, USA, and UKJ and South Africa. The second edition of the workshop, Amalgam, was organized by BTKIT Dwarhat in a virtual mode in collaboration with 6th, 6th ICACC 2020 at Las Vegas, USA. Though this ed the second edition was planned in a physical mode, but due to this global pandemic COVID-19, we had to conduct this workshop in online mode. Also, the second edition of the workshop was technically sponsored by IEEE Las Vegas section USA. Once again, the resource person in the second edition of the workshop are from across the globe. The hands-on session were also conducted during the second session of the workshop. Now, this is the third edition of the workshop, which is starting from today onwards. It means from 27th of December and the last session will be on 31st December. So this is a five day workshop. The third edition of this workshop is sponsored by IEEE Young Professionals MGA, IEEE Sigma Processing Society UP section and IEEE UP section and BTKIT Dwarhat. Basically, this third edition of the workshop serves as a discussion and collaboration forum for the academic and industrial researchers working in the field of machine learning, deep learning, and their various applications. In the third edition of the workshop, we have many resource persons, such as Professor Devashish Chaudhary, ex-DRDO scientist and DGN from GRDO. We also have Dr. Sheetla Prashad, scientist from A-Star Singapore, Dr. Shivram Dubey from IIIT Ilabar, Professor uh, Dr. P. R. Muduli from IIT BHU, Professor S. K. Singh from IIT BHU, Professor Ashish Kumar Singh from MN NIT Ilabar, Dr. Satish Kumar Singh, also the chairman of IEEE UP section from IEEE Ilabar, and the last session will be conducted by Professor S. N. Singh. Professor S. N. Singh is the fellow of IEEE and National Academy of Engineering, and he is a professor. He is currently a professor at IIT Kanpur. During this five day of workshop, there will, uh, there will be two special sessions during the workshop related to IEEE. Also a get together and a networking session will be there on 31st December 2021 for the in-house participants. Now, the participants who are active participants and join all the sessions on the 5G, after completing their feedback, they will be getting the certificate from IEEE UP section, from IEEE Young Professionals, and from IEEE Signal Processing Society UP section. With this, I now welcome today's speaker, Dr. Devashish Chaudhary. Let me, let me give, a, give a brief introduction to Dr. Chaudhary. Dr. Devashish Chaudhary received BSc with honors in mathematics from Vishubharti University, Shanti Niketan, MSc in applied mathematics from Jadapur University, Kolkata, and PhD degree in image processing and pattern recognition from Indian Statistical Institute, ISI, Kolkata. Recently, he has retired as a senior scientist and DGM deputy general manager at DRDO Integration Center, Panagad, India. And recently, he has joined as a professor in the Department of Computer Application at Techno India University, Kolkata. Dr. Chaudhary was a project scientist at Indian Aesthetical Institute in ISI, Adrian Project, uh, Adrian Project collaborated by SI and Department of State Government of India. He was a research associate of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research CSIR at ISI, Kolkata. He was a scientist at Defense Electronics Applications Laboratory, Dehradun, India, from July 1996 to December 2000 and December 2006 to middle of two, July 2014. Also, he was an associate professor 
of Defense Institute of Advanced Technology at a deemed university Pune during 2001-2003. He was a visiting professor at University of Nebraska, USA in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering during 2003-2004. He was posted at Integrated Test Range ITR Chandipur for nearly one and a half years for a missile tracking project. By EOTS, uh, by EOTS systems, he has been transferred in public interest from Deal Dehradun to DRDO Integration Center, Panagar, Bardwan, West Bengal as Deputy General Manager and DMS in the middle of July 2014. He also visited many other universities and institutes within India to deliver invited lectures. He has been a member of the program organizing committee of many national and international conferences. He also served as a session chair of various international conferences. He has contributed significantly in the pattern recognition, image processing, computer vision and remote sensing research as revealed by his publications. He has made an influential contribution in the automatic target detection from multi-sensor satellite images for seen correction, for seen correlation area navigation of AGNI Agni missile guidance system, generated the information map and transmitted it to military intelligence during Kargil war and developed prototype applications for strategic defense intelligence information extraction. This research led to several papers published in IEEE Springer and Elsevier. Recently, his one project on cognitive surveillance, he has been sanctioned for DRDO Young Scientist Laboratory Cognitive Technology DYSL CT Chennai. He, he is selected as a chairman of the mentor committee for the set project by the Directorate of Management Council, headed by Dr. G. Satish Reddy, Director General DRDO and Scientific Advisor of Raksha Mantra Alai Government of India. He has got a lot of ex experience in advising and guiding others in related fields. He has, he has extensive experience in the field of automatic target detection from satellite imagery. He has successfully completed seven national important projects for the defense services. Many successful systems were handed over to the Indian Army, Indian Navy, for which he got three awards from the GRU. He has guided many PhD students MTech MS research students. He has authored or co-authored over 75 papers in international journals and conferences in the area of his domain expert. He is also the associate editor and reviewer in many international journals. He is a senior member of ICEPALI and fellow of IETE. He has received most popular paper award from ICEPALI Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society in the year 2013. His research interests include image processing, pattern recognition, computer vision, remote sensing and target detection from satellite, SAR, thermal and MMW imageries. With this, I now welcome the today's speaker, Dr. Devashish Chaudhary. Over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Professor Kirk. And um, just one minute. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, today, uh, the talk about the pattern recognition and machine learning, because it is a old wine in a new bottle. So, pattern recognition is a very famous, uh, your uh, and very familiar uh, subject in the statistics and mathematics and for various purposes it is using. Now, how this pattern recognition used in the machine learning and what are the purpose of machine learning that is more important today's scenario. So what is machine learning? Learning actually is a process. When the human, a newborn baby, if I say that, this is a spoon, then every day, if I 
say that this is a spoon. I saw him the spoon. Then ultimately, after a few months or one year, if I asked he or she that, what is this? Or try to find out the spoon from a couple of objects, he can find out. So that is the learning process, a human, how the human is learning through that particular structure, the shape, the uh, other property, other features that a newborn baby also can learn. So for us, it is a newborn baby. So how we handle the machine and how it is learned, that is the more important things. So learning is any process by which a system improves performance from experience. So experience is the very uh, important character for the learning process. Even we are in our real life, we did mistake, but from the experience, we have corrected it. So that is a learning process. Now, the, there are three parameters, three things. One is the performance, some is the capacity, and the experience. So this triplet is the actual whole concept of the machine learning. So first you identify the tax and from the experience you try to find out that what is the tax I am assigning that I am completing and the performance what I have to measure and based on that my experience I can improve. So machine learning is an application of artificial intelligence that involves algorithms, data, and automatical analysis, and make decision by itself without human intervention. So that is more important. See, in the normal computer, what we did that we objective function or classifier or something, then from that with this with the particular features, we are passing these features to the objective function, then we are identifying something. So there is a human interaction, the coding is required, but from the machine learning process, that machine actually on based on the data and based on the experience, automatically he can analyze and make a decision. So it describes how computer performs tasks of their own by previous experience. So that is more important. I have told that previous experience is required. And therefore, we can say that machine language artificial intelligence is generated on the basis of the experience. So this is the traditional programming versus machine learning. In the traditional programming, what you did? We have a data. From the data, we are extracting the features and we are selecting a program on the computer and the features and the program. We are running the particular computer. We are getting the output, what we are actually looking for. But in the machine learning, we are identifying the output itself. So data, it is a huge amount of data. From the data, what is my output? Based on that, computer will decide the program and it will uh, detect the particular object. So when do we use machine learning? That means machine learning is the replacement of the human interaction. So where the human fail, the machine learning will start. The human expertise does not exist. Suppose if I want to navigate the Mars, their human expertise is not available. So in that case, if we have a machine learning procedure, then we can extract a lot of information from the Mars. Then human cannot explain their expertise from the speech recognition, which machine can. Model must be customized, personalized medicine like that. Models are based on the huge amounts of data. So like this is a sub character recognition problem, which is the machine learning from here. It is very difficult for the human to find out the all the two character. But machine learning procedure, we can find out the particular character. Now, some more example of tasks based on the solved by the learning algorithm. Here I am describing the learning algorithm 
or machine learning pursuit the examples where I can able to extract my particular object. Recognition of a pattern like your facial identification, facial expression. So in this facial expression, uh, like your uh, today's scenario, we are uh, going to implement uh, one project for the young scientist lab, uh, my cognitive surveillance activity that uh, from this expression, how machine can identify that a particular person will going to crime. Because the person who is going to crime, his facial expression, his body language may be not same as the normal person. So from his attitude, from his facial expression, from his body language, from his eyeball reaction, all these features, if I collect and if I able to distinguish between the normal activity and the abnormal activity, from there I can identify the person facial expression where the person is going to cry. That is very important. That project actually already sanctioned and we are working for that. Then the handwritten for spoken or spoken words, medical images. These are the recognition of the pattern. Then uh, generates pattern, generates pattern or motion sequences that can be identified by the machine learning. Recognize anomalies, unusual credit card tangent, unusual patterns or sensor reading of nuclear power plant. So there are various uses of the machine learning today scenario. Some more application, web search, computational biology, finance, e-commerce, space exploration, robotics, like that. So there is a lot of example you can find out and you can find out the technology, how uh, the particular domain we can solve by the machine learning. So I told earlier that the three triplet parameters, one T, P and E, the so tax, performance and the experience that is very important for the learning tax. T, suppose I have an example, T, playing checkers. So performance means how much I can improve my learning process. That means percentage of games owned against an arbitrary opponent. That is more important. And playing practice games against itself. So that is the experience. So this way you have to design a machine learning process by the experience and find out the tax uh, particular tasks and the performance matrix measure and from the experience you can improve the measure. Now, <clears throat> some of the applications state of the art technology for the machine learning, Nevada made it uh, legal autonomous cars uh, to drive uh, on roads in June 2011. It's an autonomous car. Then the US government, the four states, the Nevada, Florida, California, and Michigan, they have legalized the autonomous car. Now in the autonomous car, these are the particular sensors we have, like your one GPS system, then 360 degree 3D ladder, then stereo cameras. There are a lot of cameras here for actually uh, design a 3D view, then obstacle detection uh, by ladder sensor. So using this all sensor, the automatic onboard computer can uh, uh, drive the car without human. So this is the actual scenario of the technology. Now the <clears throat> there are a lot of other application like your face recognition I have told you. So there are different layer, hidden layer that Deep learning process, more data is required, more layer is required, and the each and every layer you can find out the features, the pixel base, the edge base, the object combination, with different edges. Then you can identify the object. Then multiple object if you have in a particular scenario, then you can also design different different objects, features. From the different features, you can find out the particular object. 
Also, at the same time, scene labeling via deep learning. In a particular scene, what are the cars, the roads, the buildings, all these things you can find out and you can label. Now, now I am going to the particular, uh, your uh, theoretical concept of the machine learning problems, how it works. So there are two techniques. One is the supervised, another is the unsupervised techniques. So unsupervised is that there is no idea about the data, where my data is unknown. And supervised, I have a training samples, and I train my system through the training sample. And from the training sample, I can classify or that is called a supervised type of technique. So in the both cases, discrete and continuous cases. Now I'm going for the clustering. So clustering, we know that pattern and pattern class. What is pattern? Pattern is a quantity and structural description of an object. These features is very important for the particular object. That is the pattern. And if the features, the patterns are same, then it is called the pattern class. Something is wrong. Is it OK now? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Now, now it is visible, sir. OK. So what is clustering now? Clustering is the unsupervised technique that I have told. Given a set of patterns, the goal is a form a group. The similar objects form a group. So that is a cluster. Patterns in a cluster are similar to each other. Patterns of different clusters are, they are different. Each cluster represents an abstract concept. The forms of unsupervised is unsupervised learning. No prior information is uh, available. Prototype is sometimes their centroid is the pattern prototype. Someone is taking the mode and it is called the seed point by which from this seed point you are growing the cluster. So this is the, there are two classes I have, the inter-class, this is inter-cluster, and this is intra-cluster. Within the cluster, the distance between them, that is the intra-cluster. Now, I have a patterns without any level. I do not know patterns this. But with this particular pattern, I can cl cluster at the form. I don't know whether it is a car or whether it is a human or any other. So now the cluster having lot of definitions. One every documents the definition. A cluster is a set of entities which are alike and entities of different cluster are not alike. A cluster is an aggregation of points to the test space such that the distance between any two points in the cluster is less than the distance between the point in the cluster and any point not on it. So it is the based on the distance metric. You can identify the cluster which are closer to each other, that particular seat point or central point there belongs to that particular cluster. And the cluster may be designed in the multidimensional case. You can highly densely populated forms in one cluster, partially populated, they are different cluster. So it is based on the density. So cluster having lot of your uh, variations, techniques. There are a lot of application, document processing, man-machine interaction, remote sensing data analysis, biomedical, data mining, error detection in groups, their user database, several others areas also. Now, this is my pattern. X, the pattern having the n dimension. 
the ith cluster xi so this pattern if i do uh, cluster then union of suppose see my number of cluster that union of all these classes will gives you the whole pattern and xi individual group is equal to no individual group is not and addition in addition xi intersection xj equal to phi because there are two cluster different cluster they have no interaction intersection portion so that is the hard partition now in the clustering pattern generation similarity formulation cluster generation data abstraction cluster validation these are the basic multiple steps of the clusters now there are two type one is the hard cluster and another the fuzzy clustering table treat data as a crisp numbers treat the clusters as hard and like your game is algorithms that is a hard, hard that means is it is not belongs to the other two with the name function, a particular pattern may be belongs to Okay, now clustering strategies. So K means aggregate clustering, mean shift clustering, spectral clustering. K means very well known cluster technique based on the metric. Aggregate is that that all different different there are lot of patterns. Each and every pattern is a cluster, and nearest to the pattern from the group. Likewise, all the patterns. A single the mean shift clustering based on the mean you are shifting the density function and based on that you can cluster <laughs> so there are synergy measures yes. i have told you yes yes all the participants please mute your mic Participants, please okay. mute your mic. Okay. Now, uh, since this particular cluster based on the metric distance, so there are various distance available. Equilibrium distance, city block distance, chessboard distance, and this is my distance, which is very well known now, which has been published in 1992. All these distances, this equilibrium is the perfect distance, but since the computationally it is very expensive, when I have extracted a lot of the two-day scenario, we have a handling with a lot of data. So clustering by the equilibrium distance, it is not fruitful. So that way, there is city block and chessboard distance comes. But the city block is the overestimation with respect to the equilibrium. This is the underestimation with respect to the equity and chessboard. So how I combine these two city block and chessboard and this particular distance is very close to the equity and distance. And we found that it is more or less almost same in the major aspect. So these are the distances measure where we can use for the clustering technique. Now in the total tree of classification, there is a non-exclusive that means overlapping and the exclusive non-overlapping and in the non this exclusive work, you are unsupervised and supervised type of technique then on the unsupervised
Something wrong is there. Sir, the PPT is not visible, sir. Uh, uh, just one minute. Now? Hello? Now it's okay, sir. Uh, now, it's uh, okay, visible, sir. now it is okay? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, <clears throat> now mathematical construction of K means algorithm, which is a very popular algorithm in the domain of clustering technique. Suppose I have a set of patterns and I know the number of cluster K, that is, I am assuming that number of cluster is K of the particular pattern, C1 to CK such that CK has NK number of patterns and each pattern is exactly one cluster. That I have told you the hard clustering technique having a one cluster. Each pattern belongs to the only one cluster. So as per this particular divide, this particular set where N number of cardinal, now some of this definitely becomes N. Now mean vector is this. So compute the distance and this is the error and minimize this error. That is the main concept of the k-means algorithm. There you can find the k number of cluster, but k is actually the user is defined, the k. Nowadays, there are a lot of papers comes for finding the automatic value of k. We have published several papers for finding the automatic value of k uh, on based on the data uh, di distribution based on the data distribution, data uh, number of points, all these things, we have uh, extracted the uh, value of optimal number of K in an unknown pattern. And that is more useful uh, because for a person who have no idea about the data, for him it is very difficult to choose the value of K. So, uh, but we have highlighted the value of K, how it will for an unknown pattern based on their uh, set compactness. Now, partitional method basically K means find the seed points of each and every cluster. Seed point, I told you that it is the centroid point. Now, there are a lot of techniques, Nasrachi, McQueen, and other techniques as available for the seed point selection, but Appropriate place, appropriate seed point, number of cluster is very important for uh, defining a cluster technique. So number of cluster, how many number of cluster is optimally required for the unknown data? And all these clusters, what will be the position of my seed point? Which one of my seed point? <laughs> because if I have seed point location, and the number of cluster, optimal number of cluster, if I know, and it is quickly converged the data because you are handling a multi-dimensional huge amount of data. That is, you always remember, you are handling a multi-dimensional huge amount of data. So based on that, it is very difficult to identify the value of A and the position of seed point. Then the find the similarity measure that I have told the earlier <laughs> a lot of matrix. Now we have to define which matrix you are going to use. Computationally more expensive uh, matrix you should not use. Cluster the data on the basis of the seed points and similarity measure. <clears throat> Recompute the cluster center and check for the convergence. If convergence, then stop. Otherwise, go to step two, three. Now, agglomerative type of technique. Here, the compute the similarity matrix and initialize each pattern in a cluster. Find closest pair of cluster and merge them. Update the matrix, similarity matrix to reflect the merge. In all patterns, when they form in one cluster, then stop. Otherwise, go to step two. So each and every level, you are getting a combination of different cluster. Now it is up to you that which level will stop. And from that level, you can find the number of clusters. Now in agglomerative, there are two type of technique. One is the single link algorithm, another is the complete link algorithm. Single link algorithm is 
depends on the minimum distance and complete link is the maximum distance. So here there is a data distribution A, B, C due to G. This particular pattern I have, this is the loop. Each and every pattern is a cluster. Now F and G is the nearest because single link, I told you the minimum distance. So F and G minimum distance, so they are link first. So this is the level one. Next, I have the D and E. They are more nearest. Like this way, you can find the whole cluster. The all the patterns belong to the same cluster, and you have to divide in which level so that you can form the cluster. Similarly, here the complete link. I told it is maximize. So here the maximize means these are the two patterns. Here D E and F G, their classes. And from D and F G, D and G is furthest, maximum distance. So here it comes D G. Similarly, last in the last level, A and G. Here it is. Now, decision theoretic methods. So in the n dimensional data, these are the pattern classes WI, GIX, the decision function. This is a decision function. Property is that x comes to wi is dix greater than djx for all ij. So in a particular cluster, if the pattern belongs to that, uh, then this part something disturb. Uh, I don't know. Yes. So, Participants, you are requested to please mute your mic. All the participants, you are requested to please mute your mic. Then, then unsupervised learning. In the unsupervised learning, suppose in the clustering process, independent component analysis also. Here, there are a lot of noises there, like uh, just now, that I am giving the lecture, but the someone is talking continuously. So for me, it is a noise. <laughs> from where, from which speaker it is coming, uh, so that independent component analysis uh, can separate uh, and maybe it can be stopped the, from the original source. So, so th that is very important for the unsupervised technique that how we get uh, the signal, which is I am, for me, it is a noise. Uh, how to uh, remove that particular noise. So that is the technique of the unsupervised learning. Now, these are the all clustering technique. Now, the classification I am coming, which is a very supervised learning process. The basic learning process, classification is the supervised learning process. Suppose I have a set of patterns, and the pattern I know. Pattern, I know. So these are for the trading pattern. So from the trading set, we are expecting the feature and we want an object function. Passing this feature to the object that we have to find the pattern. That is the main aspect of the object. Like here, for it makes sense. Are, uh, given x, x is given, so I can predict my y. So defend your uh, breast tensor and uh, tumor size based on the tumor size. I can classify the and from this known data with the feature, the shape, the size, all these things, I can find out the uh, which one is the uh, cancerous uh, cell, which are not. So this is also a supervised type of technique. We can do that. Now machine learning framework. So this is Y is output. This is the objective function 
and there is a image features. So any image features that will pass through the objective function and will get the output. So this image, these image features, these are the there are two parts here. One is the training part and another the testing part. In the training samples, we are extracting the features which is known for us. This is supervised, so these training samples are known for us, whether it is an apple, whether it is a car, whether it is another things, whatever it is. So based on that, I can extract the features for every object and I can design my classifier and passing these features through my classifier and I can I get the output, the output what I am looking for that I can identify. So that is the thing. So when this particular process is trained once, because this particular process to for training this process, we required a lot or lot or lot of training data. So this training data is very useful for uh, uh, develop a smart classifier. Then any test data comes. When you feed this test data through that particular classifier, definitely we can identify the output. So this is a machine learning process. In the machine learning framework, what we are doing? We are getting the particular training samples, more and more training samples is required, and we are getting the features, all the features we are passing through the particular classifier, and there are several classifier, few classifier I will uh, discuss. Several there are several classifiers is available, so that you have to uh, think that which classifier is best for my uh, particular task. Then I am getting the output. So once I get the output, then my if and it is hundred percent correct almost, then I can say my classifier is now well trained. Once it is trained, then any test data comes and that test data passing through this particular classifier, it can be easily identified the output. Like here, this is the training samples, training images. All these structures, there are several objects here, suppose. And all from all these structures, I am getting features. And from these pictures, I am getting things. So, from the training samples and the testing image, test image is there. When it is learned, then from this test image, I can predict my output. So, supervised learning. Here, the multidimensional data, that is the features, different features we have, then we can make a decision surface. From the decision surface, someone is the positive side, someone is the negative side. So there are two classes we have. Similarly, if we have a multidimensional data, then we can multiple decision surface required. Or a pair of clusters, a pair of classes, then we can decide. The features, there are several features, just I'm uh, for the sake of interest, I'm showing this, the, but there are a lot of features you have in the feature extraction model. You can find out the shape, the textural features. There are shape features, I think more than 50 shape features are there. The textural feature, 18, 19 textural features is there. And the histogram is also definitely one feature. Then global image descriptors also features. So these are the features, whatever the features you have, uh, and what are the useful features? It is not that the junk of features you are stored and you are passing to your classifier and which is not work at all and misclassification occurs. So also you are very uh, more uh, attentive that which features actually more workable for my uh, tax? That is important. So choice of features, feature extraction, and choice of features is very important for design any classifier. Now, uh, nearest neighbor 
is one classifier. It is the very easiest way to get the, and here it is not required any training in the nearest neighbor algorithm. Training, this is the training example. Suppose these are the data. This is another training data, and this is my test sample. So uh, I am labeling this test sample to the nearest of that particular training set. So this model, based on the uh, nearest uh, training sample, I am assigning that particular test sample to that uh, class. So for that, it is not required any training model uh, for getting my output. Now in the classifier, that, uh, that is a, another interesting technique is the uh, uh, linear and uh, your uh, non-linear pattern of classifier. First, we are uh, talking about the linear pattern of uh, classifier, linear fashion. Uh, linear fashion, when we are talking, suppose two dimensional case, then we are getting an, a, a line. You are getting a line. So that line, one is uh, the sign of this particular function. One is the positive, another is the negative. So there are two classes. If I able to extract the boundary, boundary of the two classes. So this is very important that how to extract the uh, decision making boundary uh, between the two classes. <sighs> So there are a lot of classifier, not only this list, there are several other classifier also. We have de designed a, a multi-seed waste because in the clustering technique, uh, the most of the people uh, think that a single cluster having a, a single uh, seed point. But uh, we have seen that the uh, cluster seed point, suppose a single cluster like your k-means algorithm. In the k-means algorithm, single cluster having a single seed. But it is uh, it is it is very uh, when the data is a, uh, a your uh, circular type of fashion, then it can be classified perfectly. But it is, if it is elongated or any other different uh, complicated shape, then uh, single seat not does not work. Does not work. So uh, the, there are various methodologies available uh, for. Uh, we have also published in IEEE uh, a multi seat technique. It is a very sound paper and uh, how the multi seed uh, uh, are forms uh, in a particular class in a particular cluster. That means you have to study the cluster, whether that uh, whether the cluster is elongated or not, uh, whether it is a circular cluster. If it is a circular cluster, then definitely it is not because the multiple seed. But when it is elongated or any other unusual pattern, uh, so you have to first identify the pattern. It is a very, it is a very important. So we study the statistical method uh, by which we can identify the pattern structure, uh, set compactness, whatever it is. So based on that, you can choose the number of seat point automatically uh, that can be find out. And based on this uh, number of seat points, we can classify uh, perfectly. Uh, so so these are the uh, things uh, that I can tell you. Uh, uh, suppose in the spectrum of supervision, uh, uh, in the unsupervised versus supervised, uh, definitely in the unsupervised because it is not known for us. So uh, it is uh, it is a uh, uh, very uh, less uh, your uh, spectrum because uh, identification is very less. Uh, and but the, for the fully supervised, if it is, it is then it is more. It is uh, just uh, one. Uh, uh, Psycho interest that what type of uh, classifier or what type of the things you have to design. Uh, uh, so in the generalization, there are a lot of training samples here. Earlier also I have seen, so it is not necessary. Now in the generalization process, components of generation error. There are two errors. One is the bias and the variance. How much the average model over all training sets differ from the true model? Error due to the inaccurate assumptions and simplification made by the model. That is the worst type of error. And variance, how much model as uh, estimated from the different training set differ from the, each other. So that is the variance. So there are two uh, fitting, underfitting and overfitting. Model is too simple to represent all the relevant class characteristics. 
So if the model is very simple to represent all the characteristics, it is a high bias and low variance, high training error and high test error. So it is not acceptable. Overfitting also is too much complex. Then fit irrelevant characteristics or the noise in the data if it is overfitting. So low bias, high variance, low training error and high test error. So my point is here that uh, uh, how I can design my algorithm so that uh, bias and variance is a tolerated level, uh, so it should not be very underfitting or overfitting. Uh, so like here, if I have a pattern, now if I have very uh, less number of training samples, if I take and if I fit a model, then definitely this model with too uh, a few uh, your parameters are inaccurate because of a large bias here, not enough flexibility. Here, there are a lot of variables, too many parameters because of a large variance hmm, here. So it is also sensitive with the sample. So in the error, your noise, which is unavoidable error, noise is there always, and bias and variance. These are the character where you can compromise, but this is uncompromised. So error due to incorrect assumptions, error due to variance training samples. So to avoid this, here, that is the more important thrust is that more and more training samples is required to decrease your bias and variance. So these are the carpic nature, how the bias and variance is actually uh, uh, your uh, error versus complexity, how it uh, actually uh, give you the feedback. These, these are all, uh, all these things. Now, the perfect classification algorithm. What is the perfect classification algorithm? So first in the classification algorithm, you have to first find out the objective function. Objective function, which objective function you are uh, choosing? That is very important. Parameterize, uh, makes assumptions that fit to the problem. If you assume something, then that should be fit to the problem. Regularization, right level of regularization for amount of training data. It is very important. Training algorithm can find parameters that maximize objective on training set. Inference algorithm can solve the objective function in evaluation. So uh, these are the uh, perfect classification algorithm uh, to, you have to keep in mind. Uh, before designing in classifier, uh, that these are all the things you have to uh, uh, make attention so that your classifier is a uh, best classifier for finding your tax. Remember, no classifier is inherent, better than the other. It is up to you what object you are looking for. Based on that object, you are designing your own classifier so that that object 100% or maybe less than 10 per 90% it will classify correctly. So in a, I cannot able to say that a one classifier can identify all sorts of objects. It is not possible. So uh, already I have told you three kinds of error here, inherent, which is not unavoidable, bias and variance. So how to reduce the variance? Choose a simpler classifier regularize the parameter, get more training data. That is the only way you have to reduce the variance. Now, brief source of classification K means SVM and decision because the time shortage, I could not able to discuss all sorts of classifier. Uh, so uh, few of them I am going to discuss already one hour over. Uh, classification. Already I have told you the classification the decision uh, making surface, uh, how the how the how the how the uh, patterns are uh, formed the group uh, with uh, with your supervised type of technique. 
uh, nearest neighbor. Uh, this is this is a very easy job. And this is our. Uh, there are two classes problems I have. And now uh, I have an unknown data, and I told you the nearest neighbor having no requirement of the training because this is the no unknown data. This is also unknown data. If I consider the one nearest neighbor, that this data is near to this. This data is near to this. So they are uh, close to each other. So they have formed that particular class. Uh, here, if we three neighbor, so three classes is there. Then we have to identify the majority in which class because this class uh, for this it is uh, green uh, your uh, circular pattern uh, close to that. So maximum there are two uh, green circle, one is cross red. So uh, majority is two. So this pattern goes to this class only. So this is the way the, how the uh, uh, nearest neighbor algorithms is actually working. Uh, so this is the pseudo code of the. Now next I am coming for the support vector machine. And uh, nowadays it is a very important support vector machine. Support vector machine objective is that uh, uh, first is earlier also in the classifier there are two classes. My aim is that how to separate these two classes. So in the boundary of the two classes, I have to find out the uh, best partition. I have to find out the best partition. Uh, then uh, that partition will give you the uh, particular uh, two classes. So now I am talking about the first linear SVM, then we'll go to the uh, non-linearity. So linear SVM mm, uh, here, uh, uh, suppose uh, W2x plus B equal to 0. This is a linear equation. So X is a fissure, W and B the weight vector and bias. Now, if it is a two dimension, then uh, this is a LE. Linear equation is the straight line. Three dimension is a plane, hyperplane for the more than three dimension. And so uh, uh, this is the uh, classifier. Uh, how linear uh, classifier SVM classifier works. Uh, this is the this you have to compute uh, this uh, greater than zero. Then X1 is a positive side less than zero. X1 negative zero is on the hyperplane. So classification rule is that if it is greater than zero, then it belongs to C1. If there are two classes, if less than C2. Now classifier and linear uh, here already I have told you that this is the hyperplane. And based on this hyperplane, we have to find out the uh, sign of this. Uh, now, now uh, basic aim of uh, SVM, what is that? Uh, suppose there are two classes. Now I have one, uh, your uh, decision surface. I have another decision line. I have another decision line. So where I am standing, I will feel safer if the distance in my of my position from the boundary is larger. So suppose I am standing here. If I assume that line one is my decision surface, if I am standing here, say so little bit of disturbance will hamper my classifier. If I stand here, then also be. But if I stand here, then it is far from the, each other for both the classes. So it is very uh, easy. We can say that this particular line number two is the best option uh, for uh, my standing. OK, without any disturbance, I could not. If I disturb also uh, a little bit, a little bit displacement I have, but I should not fall to that particular class. So that is the main theme of the uh, SBM uh, partitional method that what are the, where I have to design my your decision surface. And now uh, here, suppose I have a lot of your uh, lines. Which one is my best line? That is optimal. So which one is my best line? And uh, hmm, this is not clear. So now suppose these are the support vector. This is my line. So uh, maximum margin of the linear classifier is the linear classifier with the maximum margin is required. So my 
maximum margin is there between the two classes, that line is my optimal line or optimal separator. That I have to look after. And what is the theory behind it? In the maximum margin, uh, that I am going for because time is less. Uh, uh, how we compute? So now maximum margin here width is M. Now, how do we compute M in terms of W and B? So in, in, the, in, the, in the classifier, we have the W weight and B bias, Wx plus B in the equation. If it is a linear, if it is a nonlinear, whatever it is, but W and B is the most. So you are assuming a certain value. First, you are initially you are saying that W and V uh, is my this. Then you uh, find out. And what will be the margin with this M that I have to find out here. Here, M, how I can find out. Now, we know that W dot X plus, X plus is this set, X minus is this set, suppose. W plus X plus B plus B equal to plus one. It is a positive. And W dot X minus plus B equal to minus one. It is a negative. So X plus equal to X minus plus lambda W. Okay, this I have already here. X plus equal to X lambda plus minus uh, plus lambda W. This is the relation. Lambda is a constant, some value. So X plus minus X M, this X plus minus X minus, this is my M, this modulo value. This is my margin. Now I get, how I'll get my M. So W here, from here, from this equation, W dot, this X plus means X minus W uh, lambda W. So replace X plus by X minus plus lambda W here plus B equal to one. This implies W dot X minus plus B plus lambda W dot W equal to one. So now W dot X plus W dot X minus plus B equal to minus one that I have. So I using this particular relation minus one. So lambda w dot w equal to one. So lambda equal to two divided by w dot w. Now, once I get the lambda, now using this lambda, because this relation I know, this relation I know, these are known. Now lambda is known. Lambda is two divided by w dot w. Now m is my x plus minus x minus m which is mod at W. Now mod lambda W, lambda is a constant, so mod W. Now lambda W can be, mod W can be recovered of W dot W, I can write. So now lambda is two by lambda dot, uh, W dot W, so two W by uh, dot W into root of W dot W, so two by root over W dot W. So this is my M. So Whatever the weight I am choosing, based on that, my M will be decided. So optimal N can be find out. So you are iterative process it is. So you are changing your W and you can definitely one time you will be, uh, that will be converged and you will get the value of M based on this particular W. Uh, now, uh, distance uh, uh, that we uh, this is very familiar any equation w t x uh, plus b uh, divided by norm of uh, w this is the distance of the separator that is very well known to you now from this distance what is my actually now i am looking for the w how we compute the w and b so because initially you are assuming the w but for Another using that particular things, you are upgrading your W, uh, how it will be uh, now. So maximize of gamma in this greater than equal to gamma, which can be done by the minimization. This particular expression, if, if I want to maximize gamma, then from this expression, so I have to minimize W and maximize B. So this is the things. So minimize W means 
minimize the phi w, suppose phi w my function, so it is equal to norm w means wtw, which is w dot w. For mathematical convention, I can write phi w equal to half of w dot w. Now, I want to minimize w, phi w, then the trivial value of w is equal to zero, which I am not looking for. Now, minimize this, I have to look uh, from this particular relation. Now, I am going for the Langlinger multiplier. That how W and B, how I can use the Langlinger multiplier to for my finding W and B. So, this is my constraints. This is my, the, based on this constraints, LWB equal to, this is the expression, half of W dot W, minus alpha of these things. So here alpha is the Langlinger multiplier. Now this expression, if I uh, express, then this will be like this. Now here there are two parameters, W and B. We have to find out the W and B from this expression. So DLL del B equal to zero. From there, if I differentiate it, and it will be, so this is the relation. So do, two is the constraints. Now, <laughs> dl dw, w minus this equal to zero. So w equal to this. If I if I differentiate with respect to w, we'll get this relation from there, w equal to this, which is a three. Now using this two, three here, I know this expression and using by two, I can get, uh, this is my things, uh, alpha i, y i and and uh, alpha i, y i, w, x i, this term, and this particular expression is zero by two. If you look here, here it is zero. B is constant, so take outside B, and this expression is zero, so it is uh, discarded, and this alpha i. Now here, if I put the w value, alpha i, alpha j, there are uh, two, uh, your, these are the appropriate, your uh, Langlinger multiplier, then w equal to alpha i y i x i so for one w alpha i y i x i another alpha i y j alpha j y j x j and it is a dot product so this is the vector alpha and y is the constant term so this is the vector now here w if i put here it is and this by the equation three if I put the equation three, equation three is this, W equal to this. So we will get this. Now here, from this expression, alpha i, and if, if we subtract this, this is the molar, these things. So maximize L by appropriate choicing of alpha and alpha j, the Langlinger j multiplier, with the constants alpha i greater than equal to zero and alpha i y i equal to zero summation. So this is the constraints. Uh, now, alpha equal to zero corresponds to the training sample xi is not a support vector. That is true. If a particular alpha is very high, then the corresponding training sample xi has a high influence over the position of my decision surface. So uh, here, now the decision uh, surface is this. So because W, I know this. So if I put W and this is B, then my dz is the decision surface and based on this value i can classify the any unknown z and my b will be this so i know my w w is summation alpha i y i j i and b is this so these are the optimal value for my m margin which i have already told you 2 by root over w dot w so now, so these are the all uh, cases of the linear uh, classifier SVM. Now the original uh, nonlinear SVM, if the no, uh, if the original set is the feature vector is a lower dimensional space is not linearly separable, then transform these particular things to the higher dimensional. From the higher dimensional space, we can uh, uh, separate in a linearly. Uh, so. Using these things can be done by the kernel function. Now, this is the transformation of high dimensional case. 
any unknown feature vector j transform to the feature vector to the higher dimension and, and we have to first sign, find out the sign of dz on the basis of signing uh, sign dz we can uh, classify the uh, things uh, like uh, this this is a very uh, typical type of example uh, but here it is very difficult for a linear type of uh, separator uh, if i so so what i have to do I have to do for the higher dimension to transform these particular things x to phi x and we have here. So I from this higher dimension, I can find out the hyperplane by which I can separate the both the classes. So that is the uh, actually uh, main concept of the nonlinear SPM. Nonlinear SPM by the using the kernel, you are uh, transforming the data uh, from uh, low dimension to the higher dimension and in the higher dimension you can find out uh, it can be separable. Uh, so the concept of these things, suppose uh, my kernel is phi xi and phi ji, uh, these are the transform equation and my kernel function is this and uh, then here uh, uh, there are a lot of kernels, linear, nonlinear, polynomial, RBF and sigmoid, other kernels also there. So kernel rule is this. This is the kernel rule and polynomial kernel. These are the expression for different type of kernel. Uh, based on this kernel, you can uh, define and you can transform the data uh, by using the nonlinearity uh, function uh, and you can find out the uh, decision surface. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, kernel for your uh, nonlinear kernel. Uh, your uh, second degree polynomial type of things. So now uh, these are the SBM initially uh, actually uh, set up uh, for the uh, uh, binary classes. There are two class. Uh, then uh, I have to uh, design a, 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 a classifier where the uh, separator will be the maximum margin and we can classify the two classes. Now, if I have a multiple class, suppose in my uh, uh, multi-class problem like your remote sensing data analysis, in the remote sensing data analysis, I have a lot of classes I have. So how I can design my multi-class problem in the, in the SVM uh, scenario, uh, which is a binary classifier? Yeah, so, uh, two most uh, useful uh, things is the one uh, against all and one against one. So uh, one against all procedures are for K binary SBM classifier are required for the K classes classification. It is a linear type of things. But one against all strategy K into K minus one by two uh, classifier is required. A drawback of the one against all, suppose one against all. So one set training samples, if you have a very less amount of training sample, then rest the data, that means n minus one training samples is uh, another uh, set of uh, classes. So that is huge amount. So it may not be biased, uh, may be biased. So uh, based on this, it is a very difficult uh, to get a correct result for one against all also. And the and this uh, one against uh, your one, it is a uh, it is a uh, computationally expensive. So, uh, what is the idea behind these particular things? What we are looking for? Suppose there are two classes. If we have a two class problem, and within the two class, in the boundary, actually we are searching the uh, decision surface. That is main motive. Now, if I have a, I have designed one against all, then invalence of the training sample misclassification occurs. So how to overcome? So we have already published one paper. Another work is going on. Uh, idea is that uh, suppose uh, I have the uh, because my uh, my aim intuition is that uh, which class is more closer to other class. That is I have to find out. And in between these two classes, I have to find out the separator. That is my intuition. So uh, one against all, instead of one against all, from the uh, from the from each classes, I try to find out. Suppose number one class, 
and this number one class is closer to the which class. So I am considering these two class and then uh, find out the separator. And comp uh, we have seen that using this type of architecture in the ASBM multi-class problem uh, in the remote sensing, we have applied that and then we have published in the international journal also. Uh, 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 these particular things uh, gives you the better result and computationally very uh, cheaper. And also the, it reduces the uh, your uh, samples, uh, your uh, support vector also. It reduces the support vector. I, I, I mean, uh, suppose you have uh, the uh, uh, maximum number of training samples for the both the classes. So all the support training samples are your support vector. It is not required. All the training samples have support vector. Uh, we thought that the, suppose I have two classes where the boundaries and nearest to the boundary, they are the support vector. They are the most things. So how to find out first that which one is the nearest uh, your uh, uh, support vector for both the classes, which is the overlapping classes between that. So that I have to find out and how to find out the pair of clusters, pair of classes for which I can find out the decision surface. That is very important. So we have focused all these things to that particular paper. So. At disadvantage of machine learning, it is very difficult to identify and uh, rectify the errors and data acquisition also. Uh, interaction of the result required more time and space. So these are the difficulty. And next, uh, so can I continue or? Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Can I continue? Uh, sir, you, uh, can continue. Sir, you can continue. Okay. So uh, th this is another uh, type of uh, uh, classifier, which is the decision tree type of classifier. Decision tree is the graphical representation classifier, which is a supervised learning uh, algorithm. Uh, it can be used for the regression problem and the classification both. And general motive to create the training models, which can be used to predict class by learning decision rules from training data and easy to understand compared to the other classes. Trees to solve the problem by using tree representation. So there are node, there are internal, leaf node, root node, all these things are very important that I will discuss. In the decision tree algorithm, uh, place the best attributes. That is very important. Which are the best attribute of the several uh, patterns is there? But from these patterns, I, I, I can find out the attributes. So best attributes of the data as the root of the tree. You have to find out the attributes, best attribute. Split the training set into subsets. Subsets should be made in which in such a way that the each subset contains data with the same value for an attributes. Repeat the step, these things, and you can reach to the leap nodes, and then you can classify. So that is the uh, logic for the decision. So you have a root uh, node from the root node. That also root node, you have to find out which are the best attributes based on this. Uh, you have to find out the root node. And from the root node, you have to uh, set up training set or training logic. You have to establish to based on that you have to classify and, uh, and then in the same value, then repeat this way and ultimately you will be, uh, reach the leap nodes. So here I have an example. This is entry. Should I accept the new job offer? Suppose decision nodes and these are new nodes, salary at least $50,000. So this is a very binary type of things, decision. Whether I am agree with the salary at least 50000 or not. So yes and no. If no, then decline offer. And if yes, then commit more than one hour. If yes, no, no, then offer free coffee. Yes, accept offer. No, decline offer. So this uh, you can see that particular this. These are the decision nodes. 
all these are the decision node. This is the uh, root node. That first root node, my salary. After that, in the decision node, there are a lot of conditions is there. And ultimately, I am reaching the root here in the initial stage. If I not accept the root node, then already you are reaching the leaf node. There is no need to split again. But when you accept this, then again you are uh, putting another condition in the decision nodes. And once this condition is fulfilled, not fulfilled, accordingly you decline or you go. Again, another condition like this way. So these are the these are the conditional feature case in the different different decision nodes by which you can ultimately reach the leap node and uh, take a decision. That is the decision tree type of algorithms. So uh, decision tree, the prediction of class level for a record, we start from the root of the tree. Compare the values of the root attributes with the record attributes. On the basis of comparison, we follow the branch corresponding to that value and jump to the next node. We continue these things. Ultimately, we will reach the uh, there are a lot of intermediate internal uh, nodes also there based on the, the attributes of logic and we are ultimately will leap, uh, reach the deep node. How we can create a decision tree model at the beginning, the whole training set is considered as a root node. Features values are preferred to be categorical. If the values are continuous, then they are category, uh, discretized by the building of the model. Record distributed uh, recursively on the basis of the attributes value. What are the placing attributes values as root or internal node? So based on these attribute values, uh, you are uh, choosing whether it is a root or internal nodes. Then uh, on the based on this statistical approach, you can find out. The primary challenge of the selection of attributes in the root node and each level. This is the challenge. The data set consists of n attributes, then deciding which attribute to place at the root or at different levels of the tree as internal nodes in a complicated step. Randomly selecting any node to be the root cannot be solved the issue if we follow a random approach. So random approach is not. So there is a, any statistical method is there where the which attributes is more fit for your my room node or any intermediate node that you can find out. It may give you as a better, uh, bad result, definitely. Uh, so the most popular attribute selection information gain. The attribute selection, this information gain is the main things and from there, uh, information gain, the attributes with a high value in case of the information gain is high, the place as a root node. Attributes to be categorical information gain uh, uh, criteria. And Gini index is that attributes assumed to be continuous. Now information how, th there are two parameters. One is the information gain and another is the Gini index. Based on that, I can find out which feature will be the root feature root node feature and which are the intermediate. Estimate the, this is the how we compute the information gain. So information gain actually gain is coming from the information theory. So it is the entropy. Based on the entropy, we can found on the information gain. Now here it is my entropy. All the records I have and based on that, I can estimate the poverty and based on this poverty, I can find out the entropy of each attribute. Now, for an example, just how the my information gain I am cal calculating. Suppose I have a pattern. In this pattern, there are five columns. The four columns I have a continuous data. And fifth number column is the class level, whether it is a positive or negative. So this is the structure of my pattern. Now, A, B, C, D, these are the attributes can be considered as the predictor or E columns is a class level. So how the decision tree can be formed from this data. Now look at this data is a four dimension data. One is the, another is the uh, 
uh, decision surface here, decision class. Now, here we have chosen some random values. Suppose A greater than or equal to 5, less than 5. B greater than 3, less than 3. C 4.2, 4.2 and 1.4, less than 1.4. Now calculate the entropy of target. Entropy for every attributes, A, B, C, D, be calculated. Now, here in the variable E, there are two values there. One is the positive, another is the negative. And from this record, we have seen that eight records is a negative class, eight records are the positive class. So it is an equal probable classes. We can directly estimate the entropy of the target is one because it is a positive negative eight eight and calculate the entropy here minus one p positive plus log p positive plus log p negative into log p negative this one and we can calculate this as a one. So this entropy of these classes is one. Now information gain, first you have to find out the entropy of the class, then using this entropy, information gain we are calculating. Suppose I'm considering the information gain for the variable, one variable is A. Here A, the constants is that I have decided that greater than or equal to five, less than five. Now from that particular pattern, I have seen that variable A has value greater than or equal to five is 12 records out of 16 and four records for value less than five. Now A greater than or equal to five and class is positive, so five by 12. A greater than or equal to five and class is negative is seven by 12 because 12 records is positive. Now entropy between five and seven is minus one this log of this plus this and this, so this. Now A less than five, class positive is three by four, a greater less than 5, class negative is 1 by 4. So entropy 3 and 1 is this. So what is my entropy of the target and A? That is P greater than or equal to 5 into entropy of 5 into 7 and plus P less than 5 into entropy 3 of 1. Then if we, if we put these values, we I am getting this. So what is my information gain? for the target and A, that total this target E, which is one I have, and target A, target and A, conditional case, target and A, this is estimated, this, so this. So this is my information gain. Now in this way, I can find out the information gain for others also. Now, from this information gain, if I choose the attributes, say B greater than or equal to 3 and less than 3, because B having the highest entropy gain, information gain. B is the highest information gain, so B attributes is the root node. Node. So here B. What is what I have choice? Uh, my choice is that greater than or equal to three, less than three. So from B, whether it is greater than or equal to three, less than three. So here, if it is a less than three, then it is a negative class. Greater than three, positive class. Then I am going to the C because next entropy information gain is C. Then C constraints is greater than 4.2, less than 4.2. If it is greater than 4.2, negative and D four point less than 4.2 because D having the value of less than 4.2. So based on this D, this 1.4, 1.4, then I can find out one negative and positive. So these things is a decision tree surface for this particular example uh, by information gain. Similarly, you can find the Guinea index also, the same matrix I am computing and how this particular metric and how the entropy uh, and my calculating Guinea uh, index for all the target and classes. So these are the metrics.
So this is the structure based on the Guinea matrix. So decision tree, it is a overfitting. Overfitting is a particular uh, practical problem while building a decision tree model. That is a practical problem. The algorithm continues to go deeper and deeper. We reduce the training set error, but results with an increased test set error. That is the accuracy of prediction for our model goes down. In ge it generally happens when it builds many branches due to the outliers and irregularity of the data. So there are two approaches for this for avoiding this overfitting problem, pre pumping and post pumping. And this is stops the tree construction bit earlier. It is preferred not to stop the a node if it goodness measure is below a threshold value. It is difficult to choose the appropriate stopping point. So this is a difficult problem for decision tree. Similarly, post pruning, uh, it goes deeper and deeper in the tree. But tree shows the overfitting problem, then pruning is done due to the post pruning stop. Cross validation data, you can check the cross validation for that. It showed an improvement, then continue the expanding the node. So <clears throat> advantage decision tree is very easy to explain because it is only based on the decision from logic. You can graphically you can represent the data, but it follows the same approach for human generally follow. Uh, interpretation of the complex uh, decision tree model can be simplified by its visualization. The number of hyperparameters to be turned uh, almost null. Disadvantage: there is high uh, probability for overfitting. Generally, it gives low prediction accuracy. Information hello, gain hello. is a hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. 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 So uh, now uh, this is uh, uh, all. So uh, since you have told me that one and a half hours, so I have completed within the one and a half hour, but it is a huge subject matter. Uh, within one and a half hour, this much of matter, how to uh, correlate with this pattern recognition technique, different different technique to the machine learning, and what is the procedure of the machine learning, where we are going to use those things. Uh, that I am little bit highlighted. So uh, practical scenario, how we are doing those things uh, that I cannot able to explain here. And uh, now you can ask me if. Uh, OK, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, any mm. question from the participant side? Uh, any question from the participants? So, sir, I think there is no question from the participant side. Okay. Okay. And I also hope that the, all of the participant must have enjoyed this lecture. Hello, and, sir. Ha, yeah, ma'am. Uh, sir, how to decide uh, the SVM kernel? Kernel? Yes, sir. OK. The kernel actually, see, the particular kernel, uh, I mean, decision making for a particular kernel, it is a very difficult. But suppose uh, the data you are considering and what the target you are looking, based on that only you have to take the decision, but the people are using all those kernel, whatever I have discussed, and you have to, uh, uh, and there is no such uh, type of uh, things uh, is highlighted 
and for a particular data which kernel is best uh, fit uh, but most of the people are using trial and error type of things and try to find out which is the optimal value what i am looking for um, getting these things so there is no such type of uh, statistical or analytical method by which i cannot able to say that which kernel is best but mostly rbf i have seen because we have compared the data with the remote sensing data hello hello yes, uh, yeah you you may continue sir Ah, so I have seen uh, in the remote sensing data for my classification problem, uh, I have designed different type of kernel. My one student have designed different type of kernel for the comparison. We have write a paper also. We are not yet com uh, communicated. Uh, that is under my process. So uh, uh, there I have seen that we have applied several kernels several kernel like your linear kernel and not um, uh, your uh, your polynomial kernel then your uh, your gaussian type of kernel uh, then a sigmoidal kernel then rbf kernel but uh, i have seen that rbf kernel is giving the best result than the others kernel okay but thank you sir uh, any other question any other question? Sir? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, when, uh, when we are talking about uh, one against all and one against one SVM uh -huh. classification, then uh, uh, when it will be applied? Uh, when it will be applied? That I, I told you that what is the main uh, your aim? Aim is that if, if I consider simple way, there are two class I have, suppose. So in the two class, what I am looking for? Between these two class, there is a overlapping or my boundary is there. And from that boundary, uh, I, can, I am trying to find out my decision surface in that, in that particular boundary. OK, yeah, so uh, one versus all, I have told you, it is a it is a money uh, if i have a k number of classes then k uh, your classifier i have to design okay because for a first class and rest of the class one classifier for the second class rest of the class another classifier so that's why you are getting the if there are k classes then i have a k number of classifier i require but if i have one versus uh, one then one versus one, then it is a NC2 problem. What my point? It is a NC2 problem. If I have a KC2 yes, problem, if I have a K number of class, then KC2 problem because one versus one. So it is a huge competition. One versus one is a huge competition. And this is one problem for the one versus one. Second is that one versus all, uh, it, is, it is faster than the one versus uh, one. It is faster one versus all uh, because uh, you are considering that uh, single cluster uh, and others than one plane you are deciding. So it is a K number of uh, clusters, a K number of decision surfaces you get. But my question is if I have suppose that uh, because you are going to train the, your SVM classifier. So I have the training samples. So there, there are K number of classes and each and every classes I have the training samples. So I have the first class, I have a training sample, say thousand number of training samples. The rest of the K minus one classes, I have million of training samples I have. Because first, second class having a thousand, maybe third class, maybe thousand or more than that, whatever it is. So you are adding all these classes. When we are taking the one versus all, uh, then we are uh, that one class you are considering, rest class you are considering. And this class, each and every class are having a lot of training samples individually. Now you are adding all these uh, uh, things uh, to a single class. So again, you are converting in a binary uh, stage, but one versus all. OK, and here the imbalance of the training samples may occur. That is the main drawback of the uh, uh, one versus all. 
because in the one class, if you have a thousand class, a thousand training samples, and the rest classes having a lot of thousand, it is a cumulative. You have a multiple million class uh, training samples. So a thousand versus million training samples, you are uh, going to uh, construct a uh, surface, uh, your decision surface. So that is the imbalance of the training samples. You got my point. In uh, so, one versus all. One versus all, one versus okay. all. What is the meaning of one versus all? It is again you are converting the one to the one and one correspondence. No? You are considering the two classes. One class is one, another is rest classes is another. The one class is one, where the training sample may be, I am, for my example, it is a thousand. And another, the rest classes. Say if I have a K classes, so one class I have, then the rest is k minus one classes and each k minus one class is having the lot of training samples and the, if we add them it is a single class now so one class versus all when you are talking then one class is the thousand class thousand training samples another is the rest is the million of training samples so it is the imbalance of the training samples that's i am telling so but the people are mostly using one versus all okay because more and more training samples they are trying to get and it is not very easy to get the training samples also uh, but the people are doing that uh, but my uh, what I, what i have uh, actually uh, published one paper that why i am going to one versus all if i have if i have a combination of because what i am looking for i am looking for the two class problem that there are two classes which are overlapping to each other and first i am trying to find out which are the nearest pair classes once i get the nearest pair classes then based on this nearest player uh, searching method um, i can find out the decision surface for all those classes it is not that one versus all or one versus one so it is the different type of architecture i have designed uh, that nearest pair of classes i have to i am going to find out and from there i can uh, design my uh, decision surface so there computationally it is more cheaper and gives the result better which solve the imbalance of training samples also that's what i am talking uh, sir okay, thank you, sir. Hmm. sir yes Excuse me, I want to ask about the one class classification problem. What? What? About, I want to ask about the one class classification problem. How can we do the classification problem with one class? Uh, it is an interesting question. Mm. One class uh, classification problem. I actually I uh, read one paper only. There are not uh, very few high uh, research uh, activity uh, I have seen in that literature, uh, but one paper I have seen that one versus uh, one, uh, they are taking certain type of measure they are getting because it uh, also this particular paper I read and uh, very long days before. I'm sorry at this time, I could not able to particular explain that particular logic what they have defined. Uh, but uh, in future, if you contact with me, then definitely I will go through that paper and I will collect the information. Okay, uh, so please share, uh, sir, can you share this paper? Uh, which paper? That uh, one class classification problem. One class, uh, that, uh, just you uh, tell to Professor Carr and uh, uh, he know my uh, email address and you can communicate with me then i can find out the paper and i will do that thank you so much okay. uh, you just drop an email to the email id given in the promotional poster and i will forward it to you yeah okay so any other question I think you must have enjoyed this session and you must have learned all a lot of new things from uh, Dr. Devashish Chaudhary.
Now I would request all the participants to please switch on their camera so that a snapshot can be taken for the session. All the participants, please switch on your camera. Uh, sir, can you please unshare your screen? Yeah. Please unshare your screen. Ah, I have shared my screen. So please unshare your. Yeah. Unshare. Yes. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Just a second. Let me take. Yeah. You want to uh, my camera should be off or? Uh, sir, on sir. Uh, my camera on. Now it is clear. Uh, no. Yeah. Yes. Huh? Okay, Clear. Okay, just, just a second. Okay, thank you all. Thank you. Uh, just a few announcements are there. 